The class system of Ashes of Creation is an interesting take on the generic class system from other MMOs and other fantasy media based on eight key archetypes. Let's take a deeper dive into this system and why it's going to be awesome. Now the question that I'm asking here is, what makes it different? And why is it so awesome? Well when we begin to break it down, it might seem generic at first, but you will see the difference and uniqueness that Intrepid are putting into the game. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about an exciting feature called a Siege Ability. That sounds like it will be an amazing spectacle within Node Sieges. The class system is split across 8 distinct archetypes that many of you will recognise from other fantasy media. These archetypes are Bard, Cleric, Fighter, Mage, Ranger, Rogue, Summoner and Tank. I really hope they change the name of that last class. Please Intrepid. You will choose one of these 8 archetypes. When you build your character, this will be your primary archetype, which players are unable to change. Whilst you progress through the game, you'll be given skill points as you level up, which can be allocated into a skill tree. Be aware that it will not be possible to max all of the skills in the skill trees. So this is your standard class based stuff, but here's where it gets interesting. When you hit level 25, you'll then be requested to choose a secondary archetype, which will flesh out your class even further. Your second archetype will not provide additional skills to your character, but they will augment your primary skills with effects from your secondary archetypes, which can even change the way an ability works, adapting what it originally did to incorporate the identity of the secondary archetype. For example, if you created a mage, you would have access to Fireball, when you hit level 25 and you decided that your character was going to have a secondary archetype of a rogue, your class would be Shadowcaster. You will still have the Fireball ability, but this would have an additional effect such as a change in appearance or perhaps another negative effect on top of burning, such as bleeding. Note that secondary archetypes can be changed, but they cannot be changed on the fly, meaning you will most probably have to visit a location to change your secondary archetype. This entire system with only 8 archetypes actually opens up the entire class system to provide each player with 64 available class variants, which is incredible. But our biggest question should be, how will they be balancing this? Luckily for us, there is some information. Of course the main abilities of each archetype will be balanced based on those archetypes and thus will change only on that level. Secondary archetypes will be balanced via four primary groups of the augments assigned to the base archetype, meaning that the main abilities and additional effects will be balanced differently via a group system. This could mean that Fireball could be balanced, but the rogue secondary archetype augment may not. All of the balancing in the game will be focused on groups, thus there will be no balancing for 1v1 combat. Intrepid is going to be working with what they call a rock-paper-scissors dynamic, 1v1 matchup system, pushing a counterplay to every class as they have stated that one class will be superior to another in one-on-one -on -one combat. This can be concerning for players who enjoy one-on-one -on -one combat, but as this game is heavily focused on group PvP, it will be the diversity of present classes that will level the playing field for PvP combat. There is also a mention of class meta as well which again is an important topic regarding any game with a class system like Ashes of Creation. Intrepid have said that the effectiveness of classes, skills and gear is going to depend on the enemy or the encounter itself. There will be different challenges which will require different classes to effectively overcome that challenge. You may encounter a creature that is immune to magical abilities, so therefore your martial fighters will be more effective, whereas down the road you might encounter a creature with an opposite immunity and be immune to martial attacks, thus a mage would be more effective. Of course, this example is very simplistic and the encounters will be a lot more nuanced and impactful. It is said that there will also be class specific quests in Ashes of Creation that will be suited to one of the 64 different classes in the game. This is a way for players to discover the entirety of their class and what their class is more proficient at, and probably what it isn't. I'm a big fan of the class specific quests, 
it gives players the opportunity to just get to know their class better. And it's going to be really interesting to see how fleshed out these quests really are. But let me know in the comments below if you think this is an awesome idea. Or if you think people would only do a few of them and then these quests will just be forgotten about. And then lastly, I wanted to finish on something that sounds epic. Now I'd mentioned this at the start of the video and that is the class siege abilities. It is stated that if you have 8 players of the same primary archetype in a group or a raid, they can create a monumental effect during a siege. Imagine this. You're on the castle walls, firing a barrage of arrows, when you spot a group of summoners banding together. Suddenly, they summon a massive behemoth or something gigantic to try and break down the castle walls. Are you telling me that doesn't sound incredible? That's it for today. Thank you all for watching this video about the class system in Ashes of Creation. Now, don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more Ashes of Creation content in the future.